Hi guys, I'm Olivia and I am back in my classroom. I did a total transformation this year with my themes. Last year I had a zoo theme and this year I'm calling it like earthy modern, if that's even a thing. But I'm absolutely loving how it turned out. I love the calm colors and I just love how everything came together. So I cannot wait to show you what my preschool classroom looks like this year. So when I decided to switch to a modern theme, I started looking for a package on TPT of like a modern blue watercolor earthy kind of vibe and I found Miss Lulu. She had a great package. I think it's called uh, like blue watercolors actually. So that's what I use a lot in here. Some of my fonts, I actually made these myself to kind of save a little money as I was redoing everything. And my fonts are Amy Grosbeck and then I just cut them out and laminated them and I think those turned out pretty cool so I'm pretty excited how they look and how that came together. For my background I got this blue bulletin board paper from Amazon as well as the white borders and I can have those links down below. I also got the scalloped border from Amazon and I absolutely love how that turned out. The earthy paper came from Michaels and I think that was like nine dollars a roll so that was not too bad. This is my wow work wall. So my students, as they complete our projects, I will put them on um, these little clips. And then at the end of the year, I will make a folder of all their amazing artwork that we've done. So this is kind of a cool keepsake for kids and their families. These are my three classroom rules. I want to say these are just Century Gothic actually um, fonts. I made these last year and I just kind of kept them. So that turned out great. The wood paper behind this one is also from Michaels. I had some leftover green so I put that in that frame and I plan to put a little quote on there so I'm excited to do that. Here I have, I made these actually myself for my centers. I have signs so that the students know how many friends can play in each center so the dramatic play can have five. I will add my expectation chart underneath that once we chart that with the students on the first week. Over here I have my got milk my students get to decide if they want milk for snack. So in the morning, we call out their names and they decide. I have this milk choice chart um, in my store for free. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. I just actually got the milk carton off Google. So that one, <laughs> I can't share with you, but that was an easy way to try to find something that filled there. This is my dramatic play. I also found this adorable table for my dramatic play area last year on Amazon, and it is super sturdy. It's held up really well, so I will link that also below in case anyone needs a nice sturdy table that was really affordable as well. Then we come over into my writing area. Again, I have my writing center sign so that my friends know how many can be in there. I got these Be Kind letters and the picture frame from Michaels. Again, they were on clearance, so that was an amazing find. I will be adding pictures of my students as a class onto that throughout the year, maybe some cool quotes. So that I will still add. That's my question of the day. On this bulletin board, I'm going to add my birthdays. I found those cute little circle hangy things from Hobby Lobby and I love how those came together and look. I also got the black border from Amazon. Here's another Miss Lulu. She had that package. So that's the centers that their names are on. That's part of her package as well. I just put them on black construction paper and then I laminated and then I just write on top with like a silver marker. These are my morning centers and I have my kids broken up into groups so that when we're moving and rotating through the classroom, I can just slide the group over. And so kids that are out of the room for speech at that time or small groups, when they come back in, they know exactly where they need to be. This is amazing and has helped with rotations a lot. So that's something I really like. And then on the top, I list what our skill of the week is under each of those. These bean bags I have had, so they actually were with my jungle theme and I thought they still worked because they're black and white. So I'm keeping those. I got them off Amazon, I wanna say two, three years ago and they've held up really well too. So I will add that link in case anyone's interested in that if they still have them. At the carpet, I have our visual schedule. That has been huge. We go over that every single day. 
And then I love, love, love the green and red choice posters by Pocket of Preschool. I also love these problem solving cards. I believe I chose nine of them and I introduced one at a time at the beginning of the year to my students. And then when they're solving problems or having issues solving a problem throughout the year, they come and grab those cards, they flip through them and pick the way they would like to solve their problem. Those have been huge in preschool, so I would highly recommend checking those out. Again, this came with the Miss Lulu package. I love the watercolor picture she used, and I just think those are absolutely adorable. She also had a job chart and calendar package with that, so I love how those look. Back in my corner, I have my calming corner. I, again, have those adorable hanging circles that I got from Hobby Lobby. I think it was a pack of six and they were six dollars maybe. For my calming corner, I have those products from Teaching Elementary and Beyond. She had a great package with some My Feeling card and then different strategies for calming themselves. I also printed off the black and white ones and put them on a wheel. Um, I'm missing my spinner, but I'll put a spinner there and then they will get to spin and then whatever it lands on, they can try that strategy. If they don't like it, they get to spin twice and then they have to pick their own. So that's how I do that. And then I also have one, um, the strategies on a clip so that when we're leaving the classroom, we can take them with us in case there are other places in the school that become triggers and they need to use those strategies there. On my back counter, we store our snack mats. So these again are from Miss Lulu. I typed the names on, laminated them, and then my students will use these for snack. It's nice because we can wipe them off with Clorox wipes and they usually last all year. And then it's just another opportunity for them to practice their name skills. Around this side of my back counter, I have my sensory table sign again. So three friends can be my sensory table because that is right here. Also, I keep my art supplies on the back counter. These adorable black caddies are from Amazon as well. Last year, I had the ones with the holes in them that I got from the Dollar Tree and crayons were always falling through them. So I'm very excited this year to find these and fill those up this year. I also have our art trays. Those were a lifesaver. They were actually from the Dollar Tree and that was an amazing find because we use those a lot when I just setting materials on them at my art table and moving them that way and then also painting on them is amazing. This I found in the dollar section at Target. I love to hang up our art project that we're working on at the table so that they can see what the finished product will look like. So when we're doing art time, and then this is a lifesaver. We use this all the time as my drying rack for art projects. It's usually filled, filled, filled. So that's an amazing thing I found on Amazon as well. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have questions about anything, make sure to comment down below.